Hey guys, here's Filippo. Welcome to a brand new video. And today I want to roll light some scenes. Nothing more than that. I want to show you a few simple tricks that I use while, you know, watching the clips that I got in my timeline and just by reading them, understand where I can place things around just to elevate the cinematography even more. One thing that I have to say, you don't want to exaggerate things around when you have a clip that it works let it work and don't start tweaking things around because you have to. The point is always being organized. And with no further, let's jump inside the Vintage Resolve. Hey guys, so I decided to make this video just to let you understand how I focus on a image and how I work and how I read it while working in post-production as a colorist. And I also want to share with you how I work following the rule number one, which is respect cinematography. Not just cinematography itself, but the cinematography and the or crew that work on a specific project, even because when it comes to you, a project or an image, you might know that lights are there for a specific reason and you want to help cinematography stand out and the old mood and the old image to speak his own language. So today I took just few clips, I created an IDT and an office prior to the IDT. Again, another really big error that tons of people does is just creating um, and you know correction note prior to the IDT and just tweaking around gain gamma left you just want to tweak the offset because it stands as your exposure so if you want to tweak the exposure that's a thing the IDT will convert your image and you will have the exposure set to the right point but you feel if you will be you know tweaking around lift gamma and gain you will be changing the old flavor of the color space that comes from your um from your image and the idt with the color space from from project will not make sense uh in the way it's intended to be so by the way i don't want to be technical into this, this video i just want to uh share with you a mental way you know um a mindset that i use while working and I don't want to explain specific tools this time, I just want to create a few parallels so that you see how I read light, or better, how I read shadows, because when it comes to reading cinematography, the first thing that you want to do is reading shadows. You don't want to say, yeah, I might know that one, are, one led to is here, the other one is there. You just want to read the character. You want to read the shadows, and by reading the shadows and saying if they are soft, if they are harsh, if you are hard, you want to know how to approach to your image. So shadows, things number one, reading shadows. So let me start with this first image. Shot with a C200 and what we can say here, we got top lights because the shadows are, you know, placed in this bottomy area, really soft, so we got LED panels right here, and why they are there, because they want to illuminate our character, yes, but they want to also create a mood, as we can see from this image right here. But another thing that we actually want to know is that they have been placed here for a specific reason, and for sure there are few parts of the image that our audience won't care to see, or better, we want to hide to let our character stand out. So I want to take this specific frame right here, our hero frame, okay, and I want to create three parallels. I always start with three parallels, I might use one, I might use four of them, I might use two, so it will be up to you and up to the cinematography that you got. And again, I will be using curves, I normally use primaries, I will I also use all this stuff, but just to be quick, I will use curves. So for this specific shot, as I'm reading uh, top lights, I might want to say that I just want to crank everything down to this midpoint and I want to create this really feathered out fall off right here because I want to enhance everything that comes from the top and I just want to dark in a really soft way the bottom part that actually I don't want to have illuminated in the same way. Sometimes you might want to do this 
quick, let's call it tricks or methods better, because maybe the cinematographer doesn't have the possibility to help the light during the set, yeah, or sometimes you just want to help um, the, um, the image in post just a touch. So I might exclude my character from this corrector, but I just want to create another oval here and just soften out and just make some opposite twigs from this one here. So I want to crank up the dark areas and a bit of the gamma. So in this way, I'm just canceling a bit of the things that we've done up there. Just for my character. I don't want to track it, by the way. I just want to make it for a single still. You might want to track it afterward. And also when you're doing those things, it's always better to think them without the, um, the, the, the you know, thinking them without having to track everything down, you just sticking a few masks around without having to track them. But if you need to, it's okay, it's fine. And for this one, I just want to make a novel from the center, invert it, and just again follow the cinematography like, like this. Because we don't care about this part and this part, and making a neck like this will help us a lot for sure. We can make an outside from this one actually and crank down the highlighted part right there by the way. We can do this, yeah. We can do multiple things, but just to be quick and to let you understand what we did here with few parallels is just enhancing the cinematography in order to see in a better way our character, our image, and you know, reading everything in a proper way, respecting and being respectful to cinematography. Second thing, same clip right here. I'm gonna create another serial, few parallels. And again, same exact thing. I just want to drop off that light from here and invert it and crank down everything. Just want to focus on this part right now, working a proper way to me. And on the same, <clears throat> on the same corrector, I don't want to. I just want to exclude that part right here better yeah exclude it I also want to take another pole and crank close in a donner way on the gamma slash blacks this donner part here I might have used an outside node from the first one I created I just want to be custom for this, like that. And you might want to play with the key output a bit. And then just taking one single or vignette for the center right here. Just feather that out and crank it up a bit. Just a touch. Again, real quick, real fast. I'm going to open this. Relighting, respecting cinematography and just helping our image a bit because we want to read this center right here. We don't care about that messiness right here, that corner. We might want to also crank down, by the way, also a bit of this part. Let me say just something like this, just a little touch from there. Just softening a bit. Okay, so you got the point. I'm not watching at all right now scopes and vector scopes, but it's just to let you understand the point of all this. And I also include OFX sometimes with this. 
even there, you know, we got one backlight and one key and you can read them from those shadows right here. Really hard shadows from the front right there. A really strong back and we can read it with the A's right there. In a situation like this one, I might want to start with the old mood that might be a really big rounded vignette. around this center so let me create this and feather that out a lot why I'm doing this because I want to let everything pop from the center and just a singular vignette will let you understand where we are lights are here and from this one I might want to crank up the back why the back because I'm not really anxious just from this part right here, we might not want to watch it. We might want to crank this really cool light sticks that we got with the A's and just crank it up a bit. As you can see here, we might want to focus just a touch more on this higher gamma part on this center right here smoothing that out a lot and be known always that you can animate them you can help them a lot these two neon bulbs with our character and we might want to dark down their right area a bit more so let's just crank this down and just something like this from there. Okay. And maybe, maybe, maybe another, another vignette, closer one. Opposite. And um, touch. Just a touch. Again. Let me open this before and after, helping the cinematography a lot. A few part of this might be controlled even more. I might say that this one might be help a bit. Darker areas, we want to read a bit of what we got there. Yeah, for sure. And with this one too, we don't want to focus on the tubes that we're reading this we want to focus on this dark area so i might say let's let's crank everything down in this way now let me just crank up the area that i want to crank up so just just with the singular corrector i want to enhance the highlighted area like this one here let me open it even more and and maybe this one from there just a touch more maybe just creating another one to crank him up on his face maybe by making a garbage mask right there and feather that a lot so you just want to read shadows and just and just see how they're affecting your character and your image and just control them again two characters before and after really simple really quick you might want to crank this then outside even more okay guys so really fast really quick just let you understand where I'm going right here and for the last one exact same thing we're reading at, at lights we're reading at shadows we want to help them we want to enhance them what I got here is just really simple Light from my frontal part. I might want to create a beam. I might want to create a novel 
from my character is gonna turn. Yeah, it's gonna turn, so maybe from this part here. Let me open this. And again, think about reading shadows and lights in, and, and make, you know, windows in order to let them work, whatever you will be, whatever, whatever the character will be doing, you know, in the project. You might want to track them, you can, but you might want to think in a way where you want to place them and they will work fine. Let's look at this window here. One single window that actually is working even there because it's following light, it's following shadows, so it's working the proper way. Let me just do a really mad thing right now, so... Maybe I just want to create on this barrel here, this, and I want to, I might want to search for light rays. So let me just create this in this specific way. Length, real length, soft a bit, brightness down, and threshold down. Like this. That's cool too. Frank up the brightness. And that's working in a really cool way. Might soften it even more. Or this way as light ticks. So guys, I just want to let you understand really fast. Uh, this methodology that I use on my work, I normally read shadows, I read light and I try to interpret them in order to respect cinematography, even because in an image like this one you don't want to mask areas that makes no sense with the original lights that are coming from the image. Lights are there for a purpose, the cinematographer have been paid for a specific reason and the way lights are into you know uh your image express something specific for our audience so again respect cinematography help cinematography create something wonderful that will work with it and create something that will enhance the final results in the greatest way possible. And if you're still spending hours around the web searching for the life-changing tutorial, be known that the only thing you need to learn is how to craft a methodical and properly craft working path. I made two color grading masks, one thing for beginner and one for expert colorists. In these two masks, I compressed 10 years of on-ground experience into more than 25 hours of video content. If you want to level up your color grading skills, check the link below. Until the next time, be brave and make it better.